Hey there! Welcome back to my channel! Have you guys ever tried to evaluate the phi of some really, really, really large value, say phi of 13,464? Well, well, you're not just going to list all the numbers starting from 1 below 13,464, are you? Like this, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way to 13,463. Are you going to do this? And then check, oh, which one's relatively prime? Oh, 1 is relatively prime. 2, uh, 2 is not relatively prime, it's just an even number. They're both even numbers. 3, hmm, is this divisible by 3? Are we going to check all of these numbers? Oh my goodness, this is going to take forever. Are we really going to do this? No, we're not going to do this. In fact, there is a theorem that can help us evaluate this really quickly. So the theorem is, if the GCD greatest common divisor of two numbers is equal to 1, then phi of these two numbers being multiplied together can be actually split up into the phi of first number times the phi of the other number. So when GCD of these two numbers is equal to 1, it means that A and B are relatively prime to each other. So let's write it down. A and B are relatively prime. This is what this means. The GCD of it being equal to 1 basically translates to these two numbers being relatively prime to each other. So say we have an example like phi of 42. Phi of 42. Okay, well, we can rewrite phi of 42 as phi of 6 times 7, right? I mean, I'm sure there are other factors, but let's say we use 6 times 7. Now, let's look at 6 and let's look at 7. Are 6 and 7 relatively prime to each other? So is the GCD of 6 and 7 equal to 1? Well, if you answered yes, then you are correct. Because the GCD of 6 and 7 are equal to 1, and that is because if you were to list the factors of 6, 6 would have factors such as 1, 2, 3, and 6, and for 7 it's just 1 and 7. 7 is a prime number, so it's not going to match up with 6 anyways, so that's why the GCD is going to be equal to 1. And since the GCD is equal to 1, then that basically tells us then we can take this phi, this phi function, and split up the numbers into this. So let's so this is kind of like our a in this case. Our six is like our a and seven is like our b. Like that. So we're going to split it up and write phi of a, right? And phi of b. Okay, in this case, our a is six, so we're gonna write six right here. Our b is seven, so we're gonna write our seven right here. Okay, so do you see? This is a very hard question. Phi of 42. Big number, right? But now we split it up into a smaller, two smaller, easier questions that we can do. So if we were to evaluate phi of 6 on the side, let's write phi of 6, we need to look at all the numbers below 6, all the positive numbers starting from 1 to the to 5 because 5 is the the number below 6 and so we have to see which numbers are relatively prime to 6 well 1 is relatively prime to 6 2 is not relatively prime to 6 because 2 goes into 6 3 is not relatively prime to 6 because likewise 3 goes into 6 4 and 6 well 4 4 and 6 are both even numbers, so they're not relatively prime. And 5 is relatively prime, so we have 2 here. So 5 of 6 is equal to 2. 
We can write this right here. And now we have to find phi of 7, which we're going to write here. Phi of 7. Well, we know phi of 7. 7 is a prime number. And since 7 is a prime number, well, right off the bat, we don't really need to list these elements. But right off the bat, you can say that phi of 7 is equal to 7 minus 1. That's going to give us 6. And that's because if you list these elements and you go through them, you can see that all of these elements are relatively prime to 7 because 7 is a prime number. So that basically means that 5 7 is going to be 7 minus 1, it's the prime number minus 1, which gives you 6. So we're going to write 6 right here. And then all we have to do now is multiply 2 times 6, which we get 12. So therefore, 5 of 42 is equal to 12. So now we are going to try the very, very challenging question that I posed at the very beginning of this video. And that is we have to find a phi of 13,464. And to do that, we're going to use that same theorem I posed in the beginning. So, as you can see here, if you were to list the factors for, for this number, well, there, there are so many factors, right? But I'm just going to tell you that it's going to take time, but I'm just going to tell you right off the bat that 8 times 9 times 11 times 17 are factors that give 13,464. Don't confuse this with prime factorization because I didn't break up the 8 into 2, 6.3. And I didn't break up the 9 to 3 squared. So this is not prime factorization. I'm just telling you that these four numbers, when multiplied together, give this number. So basically what you're going to do is manipulate this number so you can get numbers that multiply that give this number. And when you do that, you can apply that theorem. So you can write in, we're going to substitute these four numbers in. 8 times 9 times 11 times 17. All right, so now we can even rewrite this, right? With, we can rewrite it with 9 times 17 together, and then 8 times 11 like that. Okay, I arranged these strategically. So the two numbers, they have to be relatively prime. So GCD has to be equal to 1. So I can strategically find that. And as you can see here, we have 9 times 17, right? in comparison to 8 times 11. Now we know 9, this can be broken up into 3, and we know that 8, this can be broken up into 2 and 4, and this can be broken up into 2, right? Well, you can see, okay, this is 3 and 3, and 17 is a prime number, and 11 is a prime number, and these are all prime numbers, right? So we can see we have 11, we have 2, we have 2, we have 2. This is kind of like the prime factorization right now that I'm doing. So we have 17, 3, and 3. We can see that there's nothing really in common between these numbers that are circled here and the numbers that are circled here in the prime factorization. So what we're doing is basically we know this is 3 times 3 times 17, and this number, 8 times 11, is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 11. So we know the GCD of these two numbers, 9 times 17 is basically 153, and 8 times 11 is 88. We know that the GCD of these two numbers is going to be 1 from here. This is 153, this is 88. And since this is the case, it means we can break this up, right? So we can break this up and rewrite this as 9 times 17 here, which is, which is basically 153, right? And then this is 88, which is 8 times 11. So I'm going to write that. So we can break it up since the GCD of this number and this number is 1. That's from the theorem. Now we can even break up each of these even more, as you can see. So we can see that 9 and 17. Now let's compare 9 and 17. 9 and 17. Hmm. 
Well, they're, um, 17 is a prime number. And 9 is a composite number. Well, right off the bat, I can say that 17 and 9, they're going to be relatively prime since 17 is a prime number itself. So, therefore, we can say that the GCD of these two numbers is just going to be 1. So, we can write it to be equal to 1. And since that's the case, we can break this up. We can break this up as phi of 9 times phi of 17. Now, for this section, phi of 8 times 11, we can see evidently, we can see evidently the same thing. If we were to compare these two numbers, we know 11 is a prime number, and so we know that these two numbers are relatively prime. So 8 and 11 are relatively prime, and if two numbers are relatively prime, their greatest common divisor is just 1. So that means we can break this up according to theorem. We can break this up as phi of 8 times phi of 11. So we have broken this up, and we have broken this up. Now, if you multiply things together, it doesn't really matter what order you multiply them in according to the commutative property. So we can remove these brackets. So we can just write it as phi of 9 times phi of 17 times phi of 8 times phi of 11. Okay, so now we can just evaluate these four, um, these four, and we can multiply them together. So if we do phi of 9, look at phi of 9. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so which numbers are relatively prime? 1 is relatively prime, 2 is relatively prime to 9, 3, nope, because 3 goes into 9, 4 is relatively prime, 5 is relatively prime, 6, nope, because they both share a common factor of 3, and 7, yes, works as well. 8 also works, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 check marks, so 6, so this is going to be 6. And then as for 17, we know 17 is a prime number, so 5 of 17, let's look at 5 of 17. 5 of 17, well 17 is a prime number, so we can just take the prime number and subtract 1, like I mentioned before, because all the numbers below it are basically just going to be relatively prime to it. So. It's just going to be 16, so we're going to write 16 right here, and then now 5 of 8. So 5 of 8, I'm going to write right here, 5 of 8, 5 of 8, okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so 1 is relatively prime, 2, nope, 3 is relatively prime, 2, 8, 4, nope, because 4 goes into 8. 5 is relatively prime, 6 and 8 are both even numbers, 7 is relatively prime to 8. Okay, so 4 of these, so we can write 4, right, because we have 4 check marks, and then 5 of 11. 5 of 11, so 11 is a prime number, so we just basically simply subtract 1 from 11, and we will get 10, because we take the prime number minus 1, that's why I did that, by the way, and so we write 10 right here. So now we can just multiply these numbers together. And if you were to multiply these numbers all together, you will get 3,840. And so there we have it. We, we have evaluated phi of 13,464, and we got 3,840. And we didn't even need to use any online programming calculator to just plug in this entire number. But instead, we used that theorem, and here's how we got it. So, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give this video a big thumbs up. And of course, as always, let me know that in the comments down below as to what you think about this video and whether it helped. And also, if you haven't already, please click the big subscribe button if you really enjoy my content. Anyways, I hope you have a great day. Bye!